Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we saw this problem before, where the function in the frequency domain was equal to s squared plus 12 over s times s plus 2 times s plus 3 in the denominator. And then we knew that we could write it as the sum of three separate fractions. All we had to do was find the value for a, b, and c using the partial fractions method. But it turns out we can also use the residue method to find a, b, and c. And in some cases, like in this particular example, it may even be easier. Notice that a can be found by taking the denominator, multiply it times the function, and evaluating the whole thing when s equals 0. In other words, the root of the denominator, so to speak, of what the denominator cannot be. Same thing for b. We can find it by taking the denominator s plus 2, multiply it times the function and evaluate it as equals minus 2. Again, the root, what the denominator cannot be. And finally, c can be found by taking s plus 3, multiply it times the function and evaluate it at s minus 3. Again, what would, ever, what would make the denominator equal to 0? When we do that, let's see what we get. In the first case, we end up with this is equal to s times s squared plus 12 divided by s times s plus 2 times, oh, this should be an s, s plus 3, like this, evaluated at s equals 0. Notice that these two s's will cancel out. Now we're going to let every s go to 0. When we do that, we get the following. This is equal to 12 divided by 2 times 3, which is 12 divided by 6, which is equal to 2. And notice that's the same value we got for a in the previous example. Now trying to find b, this is equal to s plus 2 multiplied times s squared plus 12 divided by s times s plus 2 times s plus 3 in the denominator evaluate when s is equal to minus 2. Again, this s plus 2, and I should put parentheses around it like this, will cancel out this s plus 2, and now we'll let every s go to minus 2. So this becomes minus 2 squared, which is 4 plus 12, divided by minus 2 times minus 2 plus 3. Minus 2 plus 3 gives me 1. So this is equal to 16 divided by minus 2, which is equal to minus 8. Again, the, the same value we got like we did in the previous example, on the previous video. And finally, for c, c is equal to s plus 3, again, parentheses around that, times s squared plus 12, divided by s times s plus 2, times s plus 3, and evaluated when s is equal to minus 3. s plus 3 cancels out with s plus 3, and now we replace every s by minus 3 which is equal to minus 3 squared, which is 9 plus 12 divided by minus 3 times minus 3 plus 2. Simplifying that, this gives us 21 divided by minus 3 times a minus 1, which is a plus 3, which is equal to plus 7. These are the three values we got in the previous example. Notice how we can get it using what we call the residue method, which means that this function in the frequency domain can be written as a, which is 2 over s plus b, b is minus 8 over s plus 2, and plus 7 over s plus 3. And then, of course, if you want to find the inverse transformation, the inverse of plus transformation, the inverse of the function, that would be, in this case, would be 2 over s minus 8 over s plus 2 plus 7 over s plus 3. And that would be equal to 2 times the step function minus, of course, here we get an e to the minus 2t times, oh, and I put an 8 in front, so that would be um, hmm, minus 8 times e to the minus 2t times the step function, u of t, and finally we get plus 7 times e to the minus 3t times the step function u of t, and of course you can factor out the u of t, the step function, but that's a good way to write the final answer. So here you can see that there's another method to take 
the initial function that's in the time domain which you cannot find in the table and then write it as a sum of fractions and then you find the values for a b and c using the residue method and that's how it's done